What's up you guys? It's Kristen Hancher back at it again with another YouTube video. I was not planning to put out a video explaining what happened because personally I think it's too much information for people to know. I think you should keep that stuff pretty personal but considering the circumstances I think enough's enough and I need to share my side of the story. Everyone's been attacking me and calling me something I'm not or thinking I'm something I'm not. I just want to lay it out there, tell my side of the story, and yeah, that's the sole purpose of this video. I'm just gonna be telling a story of my ex-relationship of three years, um, what I went through during the relationship, and the breakup. So if you guys have no idea who I'm talking about, I'm talking about my ex-boyfriend, um, Andrew. I met him when I was like 16, 17-ish. When I met him, I was on social media, I wasn't as big as I am now but um, I did have a strong presence on social media and he wasn't on social media whatsoever. I kind of got him on social media and like grew him with my following. That's why right now he's like a social media influencer. So besides that, we were getting really close, really fast. Um, I really liked him and we would hang out literally every single day. In my school that I went to was probably like an hour, hour and a half away. I would have to walk to the bus station, bus to the train station, train to the subway station, subway to the bus station and then walk to school every day there and back. Some days I would just like not want to go back because one, it was a really big trek and two, I was just going through a lot with my family at the time. So a lot of the time I would spend the nights with Andrew. And I remember one day I had to write an essay that was worth like 50% of my uh, English grade or whatever. And I was grounded from the laptop from going out every night and finally I was just like, yo, just kick me out of the house. Just kick me out, I don't care anymore. And they ended up literally calling the cops the same day and I had literally 15 minutes to pack all my shit and leave the house. I had nowhere to go, so I ended up staying at Andrew's parents' house and then I got my own apartment with Andrew at the age of 16, which was really hard to do. And we lived in Toronto in that apartment for maybe half a year to a year. Before I moved into the apartment with Andrew, a few things didn't really sit well with me, but because I'm just such a trusting person, I think everyone's just a great person, um, I just kind of fluffed it off. But when I moved into the apartment, that's when things started to not go so well, per se. One thing that didn't really sit well with me um, when I first met Andrew and I started hanging around him um, and staying the night at his place. I remember I had to take a shower. There's no shower curtain and I was like Do you have another like shower that I could use with like an actual shower curtain? He said, oh, no, no, like we only have this one. I go in the shower uh, with no curtain <laughs> and I lock the door and Andrew ends up unlocking the door while I'm taking a shower and like, you know, pretty much bursts bursts in while I'm completely naked trying to take a shower. That was one of the things where I was just like, yo, that's not really cool. Like, I don't know you that well. The fact that he had one, no, he had two other bathrooms with like shower curtains, like properly working showers that I could have used. Um, I knew what his intentions were and the fact that I locked the door and he took the time to unlock it just to walk in on me naked, like, and I didn't even know him that well. So that was one of the things that like, set me off like a little warning sign about him. Another thing that set me off a little bit before I like I really knew him was he had a really really good girlfriend like not girlfriend but like a friend that was a girl. I'll name her Sam. Sam sees Andrew at um, a party and he's like really upset and she's trying to comfort him and make sure he's okay and Andrew kept saying like don't talk to me don't talk to me don't talk to me and she just wanted to like help him find out what what's up and he ended up strangling her. I just wanted to know if the rumor was real or not, so I confronted him about it, and he said no at first, and I said, well, you know you can tell me anything, like I just want you to be honest with me, like I'm not gonna look at you any differently. He said no, but later on in the relationship, he admitted to it, and there was a lot of bystanders who saw it happen, so that also didn't really sit well with me. So skipping forward to when we started living together in Toronto. He was going through stages of depression and all I wanted to do was help him and find out why he's feeling this way. Whenever he was upset, I would try to comfort him. I always asked him, hey, like, do you know why you're feeling like this? And he, he didn't know himself. He would start having these um, 
episodes. He started hearing voices in his head telling him to do terrible things. He would switch his personality and call himself a different name and talk about himself in the third person and be like, Andrew's not here anymore. And all I wanted to do was help him through what he was going through. I didn't judge him at all. I just wanted to be there for him because he had no one close to him who knew what was going on. So these episodes started to happen more and more often. Um, he would leave the house almost every day at 3 a.m. saying he's gonna off himself, leave his phone with me, and I would just be sitting there like, like just bawling my eyes out, like what the f do I do in this situation? Do I call his parents? Do I call the police? Do I wait for him to come back? Because this would happen multiple times per week. Every night he would come back and he would be like, oh, I'm sorry, baby. Like, I'm, I'm glad you're here for me and all this stuff. And it, it got to a point where I felt in my heart that he was doing it for attention. He wanted me to feel worried. He wanted me to feel that way, just hopeless. He wanted to feel wanted. And things just started escalating and getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I don't know how to handle that kind of stuff, especially when I was 16, supporting myself, having my own apartment, taking care of my career, going into school. Like it was a lot to freaking handle. One night he was having one of his like schizophrenic episodes. He took out a knife and literally And I, I remember this so clearly. And I looked at him in his eyes. And I said, you won't do it. He said, oh, it's not Andrew here anymore. It's, this isn't Andrew. I just saw in his eyes that he was lying. And at that moment, things became clear to me. I knew he was faking these schizophrenic episodes or whatever they were for attention. And later I found that out to be true. But still, that wasn't enough for me to end things and I kept dating the guy. Moving on to our first year anniversary, he offered to take me out to the CN Tower. He got me this beautiful anniversary gift. It was like this gorgeous necklace. And I don't really care about like materialistic things and stuff, but like I thought that was really sweet of him to do. So we go up to the CN Tower. We have a great like dinner, steak dinner, whatever. <sighs> a day later, I check my PayPal and there was like hundreds and hundreds of dollars missing from my account sent to none other than Andrew. And um, I put two and two together and he pretty much stole money from me to buy my anniversary gift and take me out to dinner. I ended up confronting him about the whole thing as soon as I found out. His response was, I was just trying to impress you. We didn't have to go out to the CN Tower and have dinner. You didn't have to give me an expensive anniversary gift. I don't care about those things. I rather cherish the memories we have together, but instead you decided to steal money from me to purchase my anniversary gift and dinner. When Andrew and I broke up, the first thing he did was make a 40 or 50 minute video about me. I kept my mouth quiet <laughs> for a while until now. He told the story about the CN Tower, but he manipulated the audience to think something totally different. On our one year anniversary, because again, I didn't have a job. I couldn't afford um, a lot of stuff at the time. And I really wanted to have a really nice uh, anniversary. And we ended up going to the CN Tower and everything, but I did end up using uh, her card for the payment. He said that we went to the CN Tower to have a dinner and all that, and I paid for it. And he wanted to pay for it, but he couldn't. He didn't have enough money and I paid for it. Just the way he manipulated the whole situation. You offered to take me out for dinner and bought me an anniversary gift and stole my money to pay for it and thought I would never find out just to impress me. Okay, so moving on from that, I ended up dropping out of school, I think in the beginning of grade 12 because I wanted to moved to LA and pursue my social media career. Andrew ended up dropping out a little bit later than me and we ended up moving to LA together. We got a little apartment in Santa Monica. We lived there for about six months or so and then we moved here um, to my townhouse in Hollywood. And I was pretty much supporting me, him, my roommate, and my two dogs. I was always fine with financially supporting Andrew. I wanted to help him out in any way possible. And obviously he couldn't afford half the rent. He couldn't afford half the things to support the lifestyle we we're living. So I was more than happy to 
financially support both of us. I never really cared about money. It was just something I had because I worked for it and I got lucky and I wanted to share my earnings with him as much as possible. The one thing I asked from him was, hey, can you help me keep the house clean? I'm so bad with keeping things clean. I'm super messy. If you could help me keep the house clean, then I will be so grateful. You don't have to work a day in your life. You don't have to do shit. Just make sure the house is somewhat clean. Whenever I'd ask this dude to clean, his answer would always be like, oh, you're holding a care over my head because you make all the money. You can't do that. You're treating me like a maid. I'm not your butler. I'm not your servant. And that was never the case. I would never hold the fact that I was financially supporting him over his head. I would never do that to a person. I don't give a fuck about money. I don't give a fuck about power whatsoever, especially if we're in a relationship. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I'm just asking you to help me around the house a little bit because I can't manage everything. And he pretty much refused. And finally I was just like, okay, well then I'm gonna hire a maid. And <laughs> he, he didn't like that idea either. He said, no, you're not allowed to hire a maid. That's not how things should be done. You should do them yourself. Uh, you can't do that. You can, you're not allowed to hire a maid with your own money. I don't have the time nor energy to clean. You are refusing to clean and I'm not allowed to hire a maid. What do you want me to do? That was a huge problem throughout the entire time we were living together. He had so much spare time on his hands, but he couldn't help me out in that one way that I asked. In his like breakup video, that was like the main focal point of what was wrong in a relationship. Kristen's a really messy person. Clean up the house, clean up the apartment, just clothes everywhere all the time. Can you help me like clean this up? Please just pick that up. It was like a pigsty usually. Clean up the apartment, constantly just a pigsty. Neat, organized, and used to be a messy person. Stuff cleans completely neat, organized. Always have to pick up after her. Really kind of grungy, clothes all over the floor, cups everywhere, crumbs everywhere. Be a butler or a servant. Pick this up, drop stuff on the ground. Put something in the dish or like put something like starting the sink or like just like eat over a table or something you know like don't just live it like you have a butler or, you know clean up her pee her poo pick up after the dog does all the cleaning organization cleaning pick up after myself i don't want to have to clean i don't want to have to hang up my stuff make sure she's organized hey, can you please pick that up hey can you um just not make a mess there are you freaking kidding me are you freaking kidding me you had to break that like, like being organized about stuff but i hope me explaining to you why it was like that brings some clarity. In his breakup video, he posted a bunch of pictures of my home and the mess in it. First of all, don't go posting photos on the internet of my house. Second of all, those photos were taken when I was in Cabo. So I was not home for a week. I had two other roommates and I wasn't there to clean the mess up. And he explained like, oh, look how messy she is and sent all these pictures. Yeah, I'm messy. But those pictures that you sent, I wasn't even home to create that mess. That was just like another way he was like manipulating the whole situation to be in his favor. He would play these mind games where we have these like crazy, crazy fights and not talk to each other. And then in the morning he would try and be super nice and get me flowers to make up for it. And I would forgive him every time. And that would happen literally every day. He would do some terrible f shit to me in the morning he would pretend like nothing ever happened. I don't know, dude. It was just a really messed up situation and he really played with my heart and played with my mind until I started thinking like, oh, it's okay that he's doing this. We'll just get over it in the morning when really the things he did to me were so not okay. I would get really upset over the way he would be treating me and I'd be crying and crying and crying and he would completely ignore me. He would just sit and play his video games and I would be literally bawling my eyes out doing anything just to get a reaction to get an answer from him and nothing he would just play on his video games he would laugh at me play his video games and the fact that the person I loved at the time was laughing at me being hurt because of the pain you caused that was like pure manipulation like he made he made me mentally fucked up and so mentally vulnerable that I just didn't know what to do with myself. One of the worst times this has ever happened was last year and it was around Christmas time. And we were decorating uh, the tree, the Christmas tree with ornaments. And I ended up dropping an ornament and breaking it. But he just lashed out. 
and he got so mad and I just I didn't understand why like first of all it's Christmas <laughs> um, second of all why are you getting mad at me dropping an ornament so anyways he lashes out gets really mad at me and I start crying and I'm just like dude it's it's Christmas like why why are you so angry all the time why do you treat me this way and then he started doing the thing again where when I get really upset um, he'll just completely ignore me. At that point, because of him, I was just so depressed and I was at the lowest low I've ever felt in my life. The guy I loved most treated me the worst and made me feel like I was nothing. And my emotions meant nothing. And I just remember hysterically crying um, just begging for him to like talk to me or like look at me and I just remember saying like doesn't this make you feel anything doesn't my feelings mean anything to you and I remember he just looked at me and started laughing when I was literally on my knees bawling my eyes out he would just laugh at my face at that point I was just so desperate for his attention and that's what he wanted me to feel. He did that because it made him feel better about himself. I've never been super or anything like that, but at that point, I, I was just so desperate for his attention, desperate for him to care about my emotions and how I'm feeling. But I just remember going like, hang, ugh, I don't, oh God, um, like hanging off the balcony and saying like, do you care now? Do you care now? And um, he ended up just laughing at me. Yeah, he laughed at me about <laughs> Yep, things just got darker from there and we just kind of separated in a way. But during the last like year of a relationship, like I just fell out of love with him I didn't want to talk to him. I didn't want to kiss him. I didn't. I, I just didn't want to interact with him because whenever I did, I just felt so upset and so sad because he made me feel that way. Most of the days I would be upstairs in my room or out with my friends, people who made me happy and Andrew would be downstairs on the computer. That was like an ongoing thing for like, almost a year. Obviously because of this, I wouldn't want to do anything sexual with him. I didn't even want to kiss him. I didn't want to look at this guy because he just made me feel pure sadness. The last five months of our relationship, we didn't do anything together, like nothing. And he was feeling very sexually frustrated about it. And because he was feeling that way, he did some pretty terrible things to me. <laughs> One thing that really stuck out for me was, um, he sexually molested me while I was sleeping. I woke up and I screamed and I started to cry and he just started laughing. That is so not okay for you to do. It doesn't matter if we've been in a relationship for three years or for 20 years. If I'm sleeping, that is so not okay for you to do. And the fact that he didn't realize that that wasn't okay hit me harder. He thought it was funny that he sexually molested me while I was sleeping and then I woke up scared. My feeling of repulse towards him went on for a really long time and I thought I was to blame for it. He made me feel like it was always my fault um, and I started to think there was something wrong with me. Why am I not attracted to my boyfriend? Why do I not want to do anything sexual with my boyfriend? I would never look at any other guy and it wasn't doing anything with my boyfriend. I thought I was asexual. And if you guys don't know what asexual is, it's pretty much when you're attracted to nothing. At one point I thought like it was because my hernias, because I have hernias like in my stomach. I'm like, oh, like it's because of my hernias. It's because I might be asexual. It might be because of this, because of that. When the real reason was it was because of him. And another day we were having another one of our fights uh, as per usual and I just felt so fed up and my friend pulled me into the bathroom and she was just like why are you still with this guy 
And I, I paused and I said, I don't know. In that moment, I was like, yeah, you know what? Screw this. Screw the comfortability. I, I have to end things. I went down to him and I said, hey, look, we need to break up. This is not working out for you or me. This is making us miserable. Um, and we just need to end things. And I said, you need to pack your stuff tonight and you need to leave tomorrow. I'm gonna book your plane ticket and you need to go back to Canada. The next morning I come and he's still in the same spot and none of his shit's packed. And I'm like, it doesn't matter where you go. You don't have to go back to Canada, anything, but you can't live here anymore. You can't live in my house. And he refused to leave. He tried to convince me to give him my car to sleep in and like give him all my shit and I said like no the whole point of me breaking things off with you is so you can realize how much you've taken for granted it was a whole day affair of him not wanting to leave and trying to convince me to let him stay um, but finally he ended up leaving I didn't know what was out there I was I was scared but I soon realized that life was so so much better without him just spending time with my friends and i don't know just it was great and i was finally living again and soon after the breakup i realized i was not asexual whatsoever and i was finally free to live my best single life during the break andrew was really depressed and upset about the whole thing and he kept reaching out to me saying hey like i really want to make this work I, I want to be with you, like, I just want to move back to LA, I miss you, all this stuff. He was doing the whole manipulation game again, and I was naive enough to say, hey, you know what, it's been a month or so, maybe we can try things again. And as soon as I agreed to giving us another chance, a, like, this wave of regret f hit me, and I was just like, oh, I do not want to go through this again, there is a reason why we broke up. Just the way he mentally m manipulated me, I just felt like I had to. I had to say yes. I had to give it another shot. And I insisted he should come back when I'm actually at the house, but he shut that down real quick. He pretty much said, no, I'm not changing my flight unless you want to pay for it. The first day that Andrew gets back to the house and I'm not there, I get a call from my roommate, Selena. She was bawling her eyes out, pretty much saying how he was treating Selena and Regan like shit. He wasn't talking to them. He locked them out of the house. Um, he threatened to get Selena deported. The next day, I get a call from Selena again, once again, bawling her eyes out, saying, oh, Andrew slapped my tit and called me tubby. And I was just like, <clears throat> what? What kind of human being does that? Slaps her tit and calls her tubby. And then she was telling me how my roommate Regan, who is transgender, he was calling him a dyke. And he was taking pictures of them while they were sleeping, saying, I don't want this like dyke in my house. All of her friends. And I didn't always feel uh, like I fit in with that. I'd be sitting on the couch and everyone is just like giggling and like prancing around, giggling and like prancing around, giggling and like prancing around. And um, it wasn't like my kind of ideal situation. Eventually, um, Reagan did move out and uh, Reagan lived with his manager. He's hurt me for years and I've just, I've just taken it. But when you go after people I truly care about and I truly love, like these are like, these people are family to me. And the fact that he's calling him a dyke and call and slapping Selena and calling her tubby, like that, that was just like, oh hell no. Like this, this ain't gonna work. Again, literally moved out because of him and stayed at his manager Bobby's house. And like Selena was literally about to fly back to Canada because of the way he was treating them. So I call him up while I'm in Cabo and I'm, I, I told him I was aware of what's going on. I'm like, hey, just letting you know, when I get back, this is not, this is not gonna work out and we're gonna sign papers and that'll be it. Probably thinking, what do you mean by sign papers? Well, Andrew took the initiative to co-sign on everything that I owned. He was signed to half the house. He was signed to half my car. He was signed to half of pretty much my whole life. His credit card was linked to my bank account. All the utilities were signed under his name. Phone bills 
under his name, even though I was paying for everything. I ended up coming back from Cabo with the intentions of fully breaking up with him, getting the papers signed so we don't have any legal issues and he's not attached to me in any way and I'm not attached to him. And when I came back, he was really persistent on making things work. I obviously did not want to make things work. I liked my life without him a hundred million times better. He was in my house for maybe like less than a week and I was pretty much contemplating what I wanted to do with the whole situation. One night I fell asleep early and he ended up taking my phone and reading through all my personal text messages. Because of that, he found out that I had like a one night stand with this guy while we were broken up. He also saw text messages with my friends um, and I was talking to them how like, I don't see a future with him. I don't think it's gonna work. I just don't know how to tell him. He's making it really hard on me. And he read through all that and he started crying, bawling, bawling, wheezing, saying like, you don't see a future with me, all this. And I'm like, I don't, I don't see a future with you. He was really, 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 really upset about the whole thing. And I just wanted to make things as easy as possible. I said, hey, look, Let's be friends still. Let's stay in contact. When I come to Canada, like, let's chill. You know, we can, we can even hook up. We can hook up when I come back to Canada. I just can't be in a relationship with you. Take as much time as you need. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll pay for your plane ticket home. Anything you need, anything you need, just let me know now and I will do it for you. His response was, well, there is one thing. And I'm like, what? He's like, I mean, I could, I could use some extra money and I was like, that's the only thing on your mind. Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so now we are officially broken up, but he's still living in my house because he needed time to pack his stuff, which I allowed him to do. I was trying to be nice, but because we were broken up, I still wanted to live my single life. I still wanted to go out with my friends. I still wanted to have fun. So one night I was going out with my friends, already broken up with him, him still living in my house and he was lonely. So he went on Tinder to find pretty much like a one night stand. And I was okay with that. We were broken up. He's allowed to do that. He's still in my house. Yes, but we're not together. So you can go out and do stuff with other girls. I'm not, I'm not gonna get mad at you. So I later find out the girl that he was with was posting about him all over social media, uh, videos of her like grinding on him and um, just pulling down his shirt so you could see his tattoo. And she was definitely doing it because he was big on social media and she wanted the clout of saying, hey, I hooked up with Kristen Hancher's boyfriend. Not even a day later of that happening, she posts a YouTube video captioned 24 hours with Kristen Hancher's boyfriend. I'm like, excuse me? I watched this video and she's saying, yeah, Andrew's such a sweet guy. Like how could Kristen mistreat him like this? Andrew doesn't deserve this. Kristen's so terrible and da 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 da. And I'm like, Hold up, she started going on a rant about all this shit I've done to him and how I've treated him. And she started saying stuff about how much money I make, what brand deals I'm doing, my family life, everything about me, pretty much. Uh, so pretty much Andrew went over to this girl's house and he told her every single little detail about me in our relationship. But not only that, in perfect Andrew manner, he manipulated the whole situation to make it seem like I am a psychopath. He told her that I would take a water bottle, throw it on the floor and say, pick that shit up. I would never do that to someone. And just the fact that that was even a thing that was said, I was just like, damn, all right. As I said before, I ended up um, having a one night stand with a guy and Andrew read through all my text messages and obviously found out who that guy was. And he decided to tell this girl who I had a one night stand with. And she decided to say the name all over social media, who I've been with and who I've been talking to and all this stuff. And that, that crossed the line for me because now I'm embarrassed. I'm like, the world doesn't need to know who I've slept with or who I've been talking to. And the fact that Andrew went to this girl's house and told her all this personal information about me 
and lies was mind boggling. Turns out this girl was actually a stripper or a cam girl of sorts. I don't know, I don't care. But after I found out all that information and I saw the YouTube video and I found out that Andrew went and like talked all this bullshit to this random girl that he's never met and told her my entire life story, I was, I was not happy, I'll, t I'll tell you that. Especially the fact that I've done so much for him and even post breakup, I said take all the time you need, live in my house a little bit, take the time to pack your shit, uh, I'll book you a plane ticket home, we can still be friends. So after I do all that for him and I find out he goes and spends this night with the girl and does all this and still wants to come back to my place, I'm not happy about it. So I confronted him about this and I said, why the frick did you think this was okay to go to the stripper's house and tell her my life story, how much money I'm making, who I've slept with, uh, and a whole lot of bullshit. And he said, I felt hurt because you were going out every night and I was stuck in the house alone. And I was just thinking to myself, the only reason you're still living in my house is because I'm letting you take the time to back because we're broken up, like, you know? <laughs> so I pretty much said, screw the whole friend thing. I don't want anything to do with you. Have fun in Canada, deuces. And that night he said, hey, I'm gonna go to that girl's house again. I'm gonna leave at nine. I'm gonna come back to your place at 12 sleep in your bed, and then take my flight to Canada at four in the morning. And I was just like, no, no, you're not. You're not gonna go. Come back to my house, sleep in my bed, and then leave happily to Canada. If you wanna go and have sex with her, that's fine. We're broken up, that's cool. Like, I'm done with you anyways, I don't care, but I don't want you coming back to my house. If you if you wanna go do that, you can go stay the night at her place and leave to Canada, but he refused. Like, am I the only one who thinks that's a little crazy that you wanna go out, uh, have sex with someone you just talked a lot of shit about me with, and she did too online, and then you wanna come back to my place because you have nowhere else to stay, and then say, peace out, I'm going to Canada. Like, <laughs> that's not gonna happen, I said no. If you're gonna do this, stay the night at her place, please. Refuse. And I was finally just so fed up with it, I said, you know what, it's fine. At least at least sleep in the garage, because the garage is uh, Reagan's room. And he said, no, I'm not sleeping in the garage. I'm like, okay, you know what? Sleep on the couch, sleep on the couch. I'll let you go the girl that you just talked shit about me with, and then you can come sleep on my couch, and then leave happily to Canada. He said no. He said, no, I'm gonna go f and then I'm going to sleep in your bed. <laughs> so the day after he flies back to Canada and I'm like, yes, finally I can breathe and just live my life. Well, boy, was I wrong. He made a 40 minute long video about me pretty much making me look like I was at fault for the whole relationship. Do you really have to scoop that low to, as soon as you break up with someone, someone you've loved for three years, and just talk shit about them on the internet and make them seem like a terrible person. And I kept my mouth shut for so long. He started calling me a hoe online. He started calling me a drunk slut. He started DMing my fan pages and convincing them that I was a terrible person. He just went out of his way to try and get a reaction out of me. And I, I kept quiet. I thought everything was over and surprise, surprise, it was not and he hopped into my iCloud from Canada and went out of his way to read all my text message conversations that I've been having. One night I got drunk at a party, very, very drunk, and I was in my Jeep, and when me and my friends are drunk and we're by ourselves, we like to make funny videos so we can look at them in the morning and be like, oh my God, you know? I didn't think much of it, so me and my roommate make a drunk video of us, and in the morning, I'm like, hey, like, send me that video. Like, oh my God, I was probably acting like an idiot. Sends me it through text. And it didn't really click in that um, Andrew had access to my text messages. And he saw that video and decided to send it all over the internet. It's all these like drama, tea pages, just everywhere he could send it into, he sent it into. Then a few days later, I wake up to take a shower and um, 
the water's not working, the lights aren't working, no power is working my house. I try to open my phone and um, I can't make calls, I can't do shit. And I find out that Andrew shut off all my power, utilities, and canceled the phone plan, all that I paid for because it was under his name. I had to end up sleeping on the floor of my friend's house that night because I had no power. And I also had to go through the trouble of getting a new number. And if I wasn't so naive and trusting to put his name on everything, that would have never happened. I also found out recently that he wants to sue me for common law marriage. And he literally spoke to a lawyer today about it. Um, if you guys don't know what common law marriage is, it's pretty much when you've lived with someone for a certain period of time and if you break up, they can take half of everything you own. So at this point, Andrew has run out of things to do to try and hurt me. So he's going, he's going for the big leagues and he wants to take half of the income that I've worked for. He's gonna try and take half of my car, half of my house, one of my dogs, half of my money, half of my life pretty much. And that's, it just saddens me, you know? <sighs> There's nothing really I can do about the situation. It just sucks. The guy that I grew up with, that I used to love, that I used to spend every single day with, wants to take half of everything I've ever worked for, just because he can. And the only reason he can is because I trusted him with everything. When we were together, he, he blankly told me, if it doesn't benefit me, I don't care. If I'm talking to a person and they don't benefit me in any way, I don't care about them. If you don't benefit him, he does not about you. He doesn't care how he treats you, what happens to you, or how you're feeling because he's selfish. One thing I can really take back from this relationship and learn is not everything is rainbows and sunshine. Not everyone is a good person. You can't change everyone you meet for the better. And some people, there's just no hope. And I never used to think like that. I really tried. I really tried to bring out the best in him, as I do everyone. But sometimes people can't change. So now that I've trusted this guy with my heart, my life, my career, my everything, it's gonna screw me over a lot. So one thing you guys can take from this is don't trust everyone. You know, I know that's a pretty shitty thing to say, but take it from me. I always like to look at the positives in every situation and I've definitely learned a lot from this experience. I'm finally free and happy. I'm not in a toxic relationship anymore and I've moved on. I I'm just, I need to figure out how to remove him from my life fully and I can finally just breathe. There's always three truths to every situation. There's your truth, my truth, and then the real truth. So take it for what you will. If you don't believe me, then there's nothing I can do about that. But I'm glad and relieved that I can finally just sit down and say my truth.